yeah, hi everyone. This is how I went this week. Not not the best, not the worst. Uh, dropped 540 in the rankings. Um, round rank of 26,588. Not the best. Uh, as you're going to see, um, there's I had an incident where um, Rose has got negative eight. And it's really stuffed up this week a bit. I've never seen that happen before um, in my team. So look, we got here Dawson, 80, not too, a bit average game from him, not the worst score ever, but it's just below his um, best, that's for sure. Uh, he's in good form prior to this match, so not the best, that we, not the best, but we'll just have to deal with it. You know, you're not going to score well every week, doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, I brought in Dale this week over Ridley, which, you know, Ridley ended up making 100, so I lost 24 points there. I mean, Dale basically had his worst game, basically. So, just like the Bulldogs, they got absolutely smashed in Supercoach points as well. He's not the only Bulldog that performed poorly or below their below average, just to put it this way. And it's just yeah, a bit, bit, bit unlucky, I guess. You know, he scored 140 last week. And then he scores like, what, 76? You know, it's just a, a huge difference. Week to week, it's just you know you just can't predict these things, you know. So hopefully he bounces back. I mean, he, his floor is higher than um Ridley's, but you know, not every week they're going to score, you know, more than the person you get out. George Hewitt, one hundred twenty-three. That's decent. It's his best game in a while, to be honest. Can't run over the top of it. West Coast, um, pretty easy win in the end. Uh, Nick Dacos, 99. Yeah, he did his job. Thought he would get over 100. He was on track, I think, at three-quarter time. was on about 90 or something. Read about that. or High 80s, so he did drop off a bit in the last quarter, even though Collingwood put the, put the, um, had a great last quarter. Jack Cresp, 77. Disappointing, considering they played North Melbourne. You expect him to get at least 100, the bare minimum. And it wasn't the easy game like um, we were expecting for Collingwood to... They were expecting to dominate. And they just didn't. So they, they won, but they probably... North Melbourne were the better team for most, to be honest. They probably did deserve to win. North, they did deserve to win North Melbourne, but, you know, it's just unlucky. Uh, Janet Short, 95. Yeah, okay. Not too bad. Not the best. I mean, I know some people were trading him. I was going to have to hold on to him. I think getting Ridley was a better idea. Because I think Ridley's floor is slightly lower. Uh, Jaden Shaw hasn't been the best pick this season. I think a Sinclair or a Doherty, Sicily were better options. Even a Dale turned out to be a better option. Not this round, but overall. And I think in future, I'm not going to follow the crowd unless it's a almost must-have pick. Uh... In terms of the bench, we're not the best, uh, which is a bit, might be a bit of a concern with his job security. I mean, the GWS were pretty bad, to be honest, so it wasn't just him. So hopefully he holds his job security, because I might have to get rid of day cost to bring in another player, which we'll talk about in a minute. I mean, John, Tom Stewart's got two more weeks to come back in, so if, yeah, he can keep his spot for another couple of weeks. That'd be all right for me. Uh, who we got now? Yeah, Oliver, 124. Okay, score. Standard stuff from Oliver. I think he got injured too in the last quarter. His thumb, which didn't really seem to impact him as much. Maybe a little. Don't know if it costs Melbourne the win. Surprised that Geelong won by that much. Or convincingly, I thought Melbourne might win. Since I do believe they're the better team. But, you know, I reckon it's that Oval and Geelong. It just stuffs a lot of teams over. Anyway, we're at 124. Okay. Not, not his best. If you did have him as VC, you may be a little disappointed. You expect him 140, but playing Geelong, I knew it was going to be a bit of a tougher opponent. Uh, Laird, 125. Even though Adelaide lost, 125 is okay. Uh, it's better than Neil here with 89, which we all thought Neil was going to get like 140 since it was playing Essendon, but that's not the case. You know, Brisbane actually uh, were outplayed, even though they only lost by 10 points. The stats said they probably should have lost by more. In terms of super cage points, Brisbane lost by a fair amount. 
So that means, you know, this, yeah, Neil wasn't himself. Uh, a bit disappointing if you didn't have a, if you did have him as captain. I understand you'd be a bit frustrated. Well, Gamble was did pay off a bit, but if you had Miller instead, you know, you'd be happy. You know, Gold Coast, you know, won in the end. It was one of the reasons him and Anderson dominated. I think a few free kicks with Richmond really cost them late in the game, and it's their discipline that was probably the reason why they lost Richmond. Uh, McRae, okay. Uh, better than a lot of his other teammates, say, to be honest. Uh, well, Brayshaw, 132. You know, kept me from having a really bad week. You know, a lot of, not everyone has Brayshaw, so got a bit of an edge over a few other players, a few other teams. So, yeah, Frio really turned the notch in the second half after a poor f- first half. I thought St. Kilda might win this game. Or was a, you know, I really thought... <laughs> Be a bit closer than what it was in the end. So 132, you know, happy with that. Then Mills, yeah, happy after disappointing couple of weeks. Not everyone has Mills, so it's good to have a player that not everyone owns that does well. And Cripps, 92, yeah, I think trading him to Steel was probably the better option. And I probably would do it if it had a couple more trades. Probably would do it if it had a couple more trades, but. Yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, trade out for a player that's, you know, had an injury. And, you know, a few injuries might occur. Like with Oliver, he might be out for a few weeks. We'll wait and see. Hope it's only one week. But the cover's not good. The uh, bench options, which is gonna be a bit of a problem. I think for me, it's gonna put me in a poor position going into the future. I think uh, I really can't afford. You know, too many injuries, to be honest. Uh, it's just yeah, no good cover for the bench. You do have Clark, who uh, scored a two. I think it was a many sub. So, you know, I can't trade them out to probably get ca- or maybe get cash anymore, I don't think. Anyway, that's not... Yeah, that's more of a future worry with the bench. Hopefully, Rioli gets a game. 26 isn't good enough. So, there's a bit of concern there. Unfortunately, he's not really... He's got, not the best role, probably the worst roles, to be honest. In that forward pocket, half forward type play, it's not really ideal. Um, O'Brien, 106. Yeah, he's turned out to be a good trade in. Not, like, not like his best week, but you know, it's your standard average week from O'Brien. Okay, with his performance against, you know, an average ruckman that Hawthorne have. So, you know, in a, since his side loss, it's pretty impressive scoring over 100, I guess. Uh, Darcy, 111, that's okay. You know, hasn't gone bananas in a while. You know, we need 140s from him, I reckon. Soon, hopefully he gets that soon. Against, it's going to be tough against St. Kilda. I mean, 111 is pretty good against um, Ryder and Marshall, to be honest. Even though for our one. Uh, back in the four, four line, and there's a few issues maybe. There's one player that I'm going to talk about, and you probably know who it is. Bontepelli, 101, that's okay. Was one of the better Dogs players. Didn't lit the world on fire like no other, no other none of the Bulldogs players did. But, yeah, 101, that's okay. Will Brody, 88. A little disappointing, considering 3 one I think five might impact his score a little. I can see why some people may trade him, but it's just... Foolish when you got other issues. If you got other injuries on your side, so it will hold on to Brady the rest of the season unless he gets injured or something extreme like that. Sixty-two from Dunkley. Look, yeah, he was an even bigger disappointment than Dale. To be honest, I think Dale did have a good first quarter, but died off in the second half. Well, Dunkley was just ordinary for the whole game. In fact, disappointing to be honest. Uh, 62, I mean, everyone has him, so it doesn't really impact anyone's side, but, you know, uh, you want a player of his ability to perform well, particularly for a Bulldogs fan, you're disappointed. Uh, Parker, 113, so a bit better this week from Parker after a disappointing last couple of weeks. A lot of people have Parker near, so it's not really a big deal, so no matter what he scores. Uh, Heaney, 112. Yeah, he scored four goals, which helped his score. So it's good that he bounced back this week and got, 100, got over 100. Uh, fortunately, though, he has to score a lot of goals, and it's just to go big. It was a huge concern with his pick. He's not playing enough midfield time. He's probably better forward, to be honest. But 
he, he's not getting enough midfield time is what we want for him to you know get those big scores consistently. The fact that he has to score four goals to get over 100, like I said, is concerning. But what's even more concerning is his negative eight score. I never had a negative score on my side. And it's a bit unfortunate because he got injured. He got taken off, I think, halfway through the game or a large chunk of it. And he must have had a pretty poor, poor first quarter uh, as well, getting a few clangers. So, you know, I was thinking, should I have taken Curtis at 38? Because Curtis was going all right the first half. And I thought, oh, if he can get a 60 or a 70, you know, I'll take his score, which would have put, put me at a way bigger advantage. And it just hasn't worked out. So, yeah, they, I mean, at the end of the day, that's why I need to get rid of Roses. Uh, he's lost like 30k as well. It's not like it was like a 10k loss at 30k, which uh, is a bit frustrating. Uh, which, yeah, hopefully Curtis, oh, maybe I could trade Curtis, but if Roses is injured, um, next week and he's not playing he probably has to go because I need that cover for the four line for obvious reasons with injuries and laid outs particularly with COVID as we've seen with the Brisbane side so look boy, Roses isn't playing he has to go if not maybe Curtis since I can get more money out of him and have that little extra cash for maybe to bring in a luxury trade later on Maybe I'm thinking about bringing a Smith or maybe a Dockity or someone in the back line for short. Or getting rid of Cresp. Because they've been disappointing, to be honest, these two defenders. And they've dropped off a bit in the second half of the season. But in terms of trades, look, I was going to bring an English. Bring an English, maybe get rid of day costs, but it really depends on who. If um, he's playing, where if he's playing, take him as cover, I'm probably going to lose points unless we can score a 90, which it's a bit frustrating. You know, you have players that just either get injured halfway through or get suspended, which isn't your fault. It's not my fault. It's just bad luck, unfortunately. So, look, you know, bring in English. Bring in English is a good option. So, we're going to have a look here. Bulldogs. Uh, forward, which isn't going to, where the hell is up, English, there we go, so English, and bring in a defender, now I could either bring in, what's his name, uh, Bulldogs, uh, Cleary, but I decide, nah, I can take the gamble with um, that other comma one. Woodland to get the maximum amount of cash. A lot this isn't certain. This is what I'm planning to do, but it all depends who's playing. Really, if we can still keep his spot in and just do okay, at least get maybe at least a bit of a 60 for a couple of weeks before Stewart comes back in and then that defense looks okay. That's probably where. I'm Really missed out this year, not having Doherty and Sinclair. And obviously need to get rid of Roses. At least need to get that rookie off field now. A lot of teams have. So either way, I have to make that decision. Uh, I have to bring in English no matter what. So looks like I'm probably going to have to take the gamble. Either way, I'm not particularly happy. It all really depends who's playing. Uh, that's all it really is. So I'm going to have to wait on the sides. If Roses is injured... They're not playing. He has to go. If he isn't, then I might get rid of Curtis. But Curtis is probably guaranteed to play, hopefully, as an emergency. But I'm more having issues with um, just the cover as well. It's not particularly the best for all lines, really. Um, even Rucks. For, forward, he should play Curtis. And where, hopefully, he plays. Rioli, I've got huge concerns. Clark, it really depends on the injuries. It was a medi sub, so it's just a bit annoying with that. So we'll wait and see what goes on with the injuries, and who's playing and who's not. That's all it really I'm concerned about heading into next week. I need to get rid of Roses, I think, though. At least need to bring in English. That's to be concerned this week. And Oliver, he's probably not going to play too. So it's just so much. 
there's things you just can't control. This goes wrong. You know, if, at least I'm probably in a better shape than a lot of other teams in terms of trades. Some people don't have any. Some only got one or two. And if Oliver's out, either cop the a donut or a crap score for a week, but then you're down, what, 80 or 100 points, and it puts you in a really disadvantage and in a poor position. So, yeah, reaching the top 5K has just became a little harder. I still reckon I can do it. Don't think I can get near the top 1,000 now. Unless, I know, players like Sicily or Sinclair go down and get injured that everyone else has that I don't, or a lot of other people have that I don't. Either way, yeah, not the best week, not the worst week. I think just a bit unlucky with a few of the things that happened this week, to be honest. All right, thank you for watching.